In many ways, the compact car has the most difficult design and engineering brief of them all. The car has got to be a flawless daily driver, comfortable, feature rich, reliable, not cost too much, and hopefully have a dash of personality as well. Hyundai's all new 2017 Elantra has all of those goals in mind, of course, though it comes closer to hitting the target in some areas than it does in others. And missing the target by even a little in this segment isn't advisable. How does it look? I can't summon the passion to get excited about this design one way or the other. The front end styling is pretty crisp and representative of the Hyundai corporate face these days. From the profile and rear views though, there's kind of a stodgy humpback shape. Is there an automotive equivalent to mom jeans? How's the storage? The trunk is actually rather large and it's got this wide, deep and flat load floor that should accommodate all of the groceries, luggage, baby strollers or golf bags that you care to throw at it. In the cabin, Elantra drivers will have to make do with an average amount of stash space in a conventional layout. Still, there's more than enough room for the various water bottles and phone cables that I typically travel with at least. Is it roomy? To give Hyundai designers their due, Elantra is with the front runners in the compact segment in terms of head, leg, and shoulder room, both front and rear. But the basic space situation is the same, meaning tons of room even for tall drivers up front and a much more cramped experience in the back seats. How does the interior feel? Now, for all the technology that Hyundai has stuffed into this new Elantra, the interior, even on this limited trim, feels really basic. You're essentially looking at a version of the Sonata's interior, but surrounded by a lot more black plastic. Is it well equipped? Equipment level is really where the Elantra is drawing a line in the sand. At the top of the range, this car can be had with technology that would have been found on luxury cars only a few years ago. Pony up for the tech and ultimate packs on the limited trim and you'll get smart cruise control, lane keep assist, and automatic emergency braking. There's also a color TFT display in the instrument cluster, an eight speaker stereo with a center channel, and heated seats front and rear. How's the infotainment system? I've been a fan of Hyundai's Blue Link infotainment system for a while now, and it looks even better behind this optional eight inch touchscreen. The software architecture is easy for me to navigate and the information is presented clearly. And of course, if you don't like anything about the interface or function set, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto save the day yet again. Is it a good daily driver? Now, aside from all of the in-cabin technology and bells and whistles that we've talked about, one of the best things about the Elantra as a daily driver is that it's got a really, really smooth ride. Hyundai's done good work on the suspension and they really made it feel appropriate on most surfaces. There's also not very much noise from the engine, uh, but there is more wind noise than I expected when you're traveling at speed on the highway. But that's why you buy the limited trim and you get the better stereo. Is it fun to drive? Hyundai has upgraded the Elantra now to a two liter naturally aspirated engine and that it's making 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. Uh, considering that the car is fairly lightweight too, that seems like a good number for the segment. But the fact is there's not a lot else about the car that makes me want to drive it quickly or really have a good time while I'm doing it. The steering is decently weighted, but it feels really, really lifeless and it just doesn't weight up very naturally when I'm in a corner. Um, and the suspension, while it is very smooth, tends to feel a little bit squishy when I'm cornering it pretty hard. All in all, it's not a dynamically pleasurable experience. It's really one that's meant to divorce you from the driving experience more than uh, sort of draw you into it. How's the fuel economy? 40 miles per gallon is the new benchmark for the compact segment, and Elantra doesn't get there yet. It's 37 MPG highway and 28 in the city are pretty average. Hyundai is right on the verge of introducing the Elantra Eco model, however, which I expect to be a much more competitive fuel economy play. How much is it? MSRP runs from about 17,000 to a little bit more than 22,000 for the Elantra Limited. If you want all of those surprising high-tech features I talked about, however, you'll have to keep digging in your wallet. My loaded out test car came to $27,710 out the door. 
That's a lot of money, but it's right in line with what you'd pay for the optioned up versions of competitors in this class. What are the negatives? For me, the biggest drawback is that the Elantra just isn't as much fun to drive or as characterful as a Civic or a Mazda 3. But I accept that a lot of buyers in this space don't care about that. So for Mr. and Mrs. Average, I'd say that the Elantra simply lacks the one stellar attribute to set it apart from the crowd and really draw you into the showroom. Who should buy it? Somebody looking for a small footprint car with a lot of available technology really should check out the 17 Elantra. It offers a huge amount of driver assistance and safety tech if you're willing to spend for the top trim. It also has a 100,000 mile, 10 year powertrain warranty too, which is great for the worry warts. Hey guys, if you like this Why Buy video, you might like more. Why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel? You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, or you can go to www.motor1.com and check out the fun there.